Welcome back to another episode of The Hunting Grounds. You guys have been so awesome on interacting with my videos and just keeping up with every part of The Hunting Grounds and my personal life. So many of you guys have been like, I want some more updates on your house. Well, I've been working my rear end off and this weekend I got my cabinets installed. So I want to show you guys that before we get outside and show you a couple problems that we're having on the hunting grounds. I've got a solution hopefully to one, the other I'm gonna need your help on. So here are my front kitchen cabinets. All Eastern red cedar. Still gotta put in the microwave up top, countertops, dishwasher, the laundry room. the guest bathroom and the master bathroom so there you are I am loving oh let me show you one more thing I'm really proud of did my own drywall textured it painted it or my sister actually painted it but looky there voila just to break it up a little bit I think it looks pretty good it's red, it breaks it up a little bit from the rest of the house, all the rock and the, all the wood. So this is gonna be the TV watching, deer hanging, deer hunting room here. But like I told you, we've got work to do, we've got problems to solve, and I need your help on one of them. Let's go outside. It's getting worse day by day. Well, this is the first problem that I was talking about. We have an infestation of webworms on the hunting grounds property. I don't know if you guys remember back last season, my first couple episodes, hunting here on the hunting grounds, a lot of these trees were completely filled with webworms. But this year they aren't as bad yet, but we're gonna to try to take some steps to try to knock down their numbers before they do any kind of damage to these trees. We've got a pesticide that we're gonna try out for the first time, just picked it up at Lowe's. We're gonna mix it up and start spraying it on the trees. Now last year the webworms didn't directly kill a tree like a bagworm will do, but they do take all the foliage from the tree and in that they can starve out a tree because it's not able to go through photosynthesis so there's not producing sugars and it's not growing so it can kill a tree. So the impact that we saw on the trees here on the hunting grounds by the webworms was one of our hickory trees, a portion of it did die, didn't come back, but I've already cut down that tree and got it out of here. The ones that were heavily infestated by the webworms were very late to bloom out this spring, where other persimmons that weren't impacted were very early to bloom out and to put on the full foliage where the other ones that were heavily impacted held off a few weeks behind all the other trees before they even came out. I, th I was scared that they were going to die and they weren't going to come back, but they did come back. And this year we're going to try to knock them out because even though they might not kill the tree, as you can see, they're eating all the leaves in the tree, they're going to impact the persimmon population on here because they consume everything and this tree can't continue to produce so we're going to try to knock them out because they really like our persimmons on the property they've got a few of the hickory started and the walnuts and uh, with the sprayer we ended up realizing that I didn't have the spray that I could address and really hit some of these higher spots on the tree. So we've hit the lower portions right now. I'll give it a couple of days, see if it's actually doing its job. And if it is, get out here with another sprayer, hit them higher and try to eliminate all these webworms. See some of these, these are already empty. This will be the test spray anyway, I guess. Well, here we are on Big Buck Ridge, right across the holler. We've got Neverland. We are way out here on the very north section of the hunting grounds, way out here beside the spy point. And this is where 
we're having a problem that I need your viewers help with. It's something I've never encountered before and hoping that you can help me out. But a few weeks ago I started seeing a single doe show up and she started having some lines on her, some scratches where the hair was completely removed. And we all know where you live, where there's a lot of fences and a lot of deer, they will normally start getting a bare spot on their back from crossing underneath fences. Well, this isn't on the center of their back. It's usually along their sides, and it's not just a single doe now. I've seen up to three does come in here, different does that have scratches on them. Sometimes it's a single scratch down the side, sometimes it's two, sometimes it's even three, and I don't know what's doing this. We do live in the Ozark Hill country. We have bluffs, we have rocks, and I know a lot of times when deer start getting ticks, they'll start rubbing on trees behind their ears, those areas that they cannot reach, and it will get them bare and torn up and bloody because they're trying to get those ticks off their skin. But I don't think that is the case here. Some people have brought it up, do you think it could be a mountain lion? It could be because there's one thing that I have noticed with all these does. I have a lot of does in the area that do have fawns. Not a single one of these does have ever come in to frame with a fawn and this is one of those areas that they definitely normally feel comfortable doing that. So people brought it up. Maybe a fawn was captured by some kind of predator, mountain lion, bear, and the doe was trying to fight it off. I don't know, so that's what I need your guys' help with. Comment down below if you've ever seen anything like this on your trail camera. So I've got spy points all over this property now, and I'm gonna to try to figure out what is doing this to my deer. They're still showing up like that. I don't know how many does now total, because it's kind of hard to tell all the different does apart, but I know I've got at least three that are showing up here pretty consistently with those scratches. On the south side of the property, I'm not having any of those does show up with any of those signs, so at this point, I don't know what it is. Well, that's gonna wrap it up for this week's episode. Remember, if you guys have any comments on what you enjoyed about this episode or what is doing this to my deer, then be sure to comment down below. I will remind you guys, if you're like me, I'm getting deer fever bad this year. I don't know why, but it's probably worse than ever. I have over 270 videos on YouTube. I'd encourage you to go subscribe, go watch those videos. I have a lot of hunts. Last year was probably our best season of deer hunts ever. So do us a favor, go back, watch them. If you haven't watched them, like them, thumbs up, comment on them, tell us what you enjoyed so we can better ourselves this deer season as we bring you more semi-life hunts. Well, that's going to wrap it up for this week's episode. Remember, until next time, go out of your way, get a youth or a new hunter involved in the outdoors, and as always, have a better than average day. <laughs> we got a crash. I'm just trying to get up close of the beat of the... That works. You don't have a drone unless you crash one three times. <laughs>